Hello, and welcome back. Uh, this is Val again, and I would like to spend some time with you today talking about opportunistic infections and HIV-related illness. Uh, so opportunistic infections, that phrase is sort of a mouthful. Uh, most of the time, I'll be referring to them as OIs. Uh, and these are infections that use the opportunity of a weakened immune system to flourish. Uh, so the key word here is opportunity. Um, and these, the opportunity that we're really talking about is when HIV has done so much damage to someone's immune system that their immune system can't respond to germs the way that it used to. Uh, so you might also hear the terms AIDS-defining illness or HIV-related illness, and these opportunistic infections are part of the conditions that can be met for an AIDS diagnosis uh, like we talked about in a previous lesson. So it's important to know that everybody is exposed to these germs and many other germs. Our bodies are regularly exposed to them. Uh, like I said in a previous lesson, our skin is the body's biggest immune system organ and it does a really good job of keeping germs out because our bodies are regularly exposed to germs. Um, we share our world with many different kinds of germs, bacteria, fungus, protozoa, viruses, and some of them are even helpful. And I know that it, it can be hard to imagine uh, germs or microbes being helpful, but uh, they help the cycle of growth and decomposition, uh, particularly in your garden or your compost bin. Uh, and last year's leaves become next year's soil uh, through this cycle of growth and decomposition. And we couldn't do that without bacteria, fungus, protozoa. Uh, so uh, that is a that is a helpful thing that they provide. Um, they. Some microbes actually help humans digest food, use vitamins and minerals, fight off disease. Um, and antibiotic use can sometimes trigger yeast infections because the friendly microbes that live with us all the time and help us digest uh, for food, for instance, lactobacilli, which is a bacteria that helps us digest milk product products, that friendly microbe dies due to the antibiotic use. And now there's a, a vast unclaimed territory uh, known as our uh, digestive system, and unfriendly candida can take over, and that causes yeast infections. Uh, so uh, we live in balance with microbes 24-7. Uh, uh, microbes can also help make fermented food and drink that are yummy. Uh, cheese, yogurt, pickles, sourdough, sauerkraut, alcohol, and many other things. Um, so what we're really talking about in this lesson, though, are unhelpful microbes. So they're, they might also be known as bugs, germs, or pathogens. And the pathogen here, patho, is the root that means disease, and then gen is like genesis, the start of something or where something comes from. Uh, Examples that we're looking at today are bacteria, fungus, virus, and protozoa, as I've said. So let's take a look at a common bacteria. This is Salmonella, these uh, rods here. Um, and this is a bacteria that loves to live um, in food, uh, and it's actually really common. Um, and if you are exposed to Salmonella and your immune system works, you probably have uh, what's known as food poisoning, right, a salmonella reaction, for a day or two. Um, but if your immune system doesn't work as well as it used to, you might be sick with that salmonella for a longer time. So this is the fungus pneumocystis that causes PCP pneumonia, this little jerk right there. Um, and uh, that is, it's a fungus that um, uh, lives in warm, moist places in our lungs. And again, a lot of people are exposed to it, um, but only people with weakened immune systems get sick from it. So this is a protozoa. This is cryptosporidiosis, um, or crypti. Um, and it can be really uh, gross to look at stuff like this, um, but it's important to realize that all of these have uh, weaknesses and they all have uh, sort of shapes and their own their own way of reproducing. Uh, this is a virus. This is cytomegalovirus, um, which is a virus that can cause blindness if left untreated. So uh, we have some good news about all of these. 
uh, our, like I said, our bodies are really good at keeping all of these viruses in check, even if someone's HIV positive. Uh, like just being HIV positive doesn't mean that someone's automatically going to get sick from this. The real thing is, has the HIV caused serious damage to their immune system? So when the immune system is weakened, these germs can cause health problems, and usually they don't cause problems, even if someone's HIV positive. Now, some opportunistic infections are not infections. They're not um, related to a single germ or microbe like we just went through. Um, some are forms of cancer, such as lymphoma. Uh, that's actually caused it seems like by long-term stimulation of B cells, like years and years and years of B cells fighting back and being produced, um, that uh, sometimes that sort of long-term stimulation can lead to a cancer. Also, some are conditions um, that don't have a single cause, such as uh, wasting or neuropathy. And we'll talk more about those in specific. Um, but even so, these are still disorders that occur only when the immune system has been seriously weakened. The body doesn't have the defenses that it used to to fight off. Um, and before we go on, it's important to understand that as we talk about these OIs, um, we might start to become aware of our own vulnerability, even if we're not HIV positive. Uh, and sometimes when I'm talking about opportunistic infections, I become convinced that that headache I had earlier this morning uh, is a symptom of cryptosporidiosis and that I'm going to be sick from it. So it's really important to check yourself um, if you start to feel that way uh, and to realize that most of the infections that we are dealing with, the real danger is if someone has under 200 CD4 cells. Um, most OIs occur only at certain T cell counts. For example, very few people get pneumocystis pneumonia or PCP with CD4 counts above 200 or CD4 percentage above 15. So, and if you find yourself in that category, um, it, you can take heart because one of the things that uh, is true about opportunistic, opportunistic infections now that it used to be is that they're treatable. We have things that can, that can kick their butt. Um, so a little bit of history. Early on in the epidemic, it was actually the appearance of OIs that alerted medical professionals to the existence of HIV. Uh, and that's a picture of the first morbidity and mortality weekly report that listed incidents of PCP pneumonia in young uh, and otherwise healthy men. So uh, the, these very rare, rare illnesses were causing fatalities, uh, KS, PCP, crypto, um, and the professionals were puzzled by this because our immune systems are exposed to these infections all the time and usually fight them off, particularly, um, uh, you know, as they were really not used to seeing young people having these infections. Um, and these outbreaks were the first clue that there was a new germ attacking immune systems. So today, many of these same illnesses are still recognized as AIDS defining, but for most people, they're no longer fatal. There are many times of medications that can prevent or remedy these infections, um, but of course the best prevention is to keep your immune system strong. So I'm going to list these here just so that you can see the wide range of OIs that we're talking about, but uh, I want to um, warn you that I'm not going to talk about all of these in detail today. We'll be talking about more in detail in our class. Uh, we're going to talk about the most common ones here. Um, but all of these are uh, things that you can find more information about online. Contact us if you need help doing that. I'll catch you next time.